Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy that you are you stayed at this uh, our doctrine class for this afternoon, and uh, I'm glad that uh, my group mates came together with me upstairs. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit uh, shaking right now. Uh, I, I thank God for this privilege. And maybe some of you are wondering uh, why I'm wearing this uh, dress, uh, this this polo this afternoon. And the only reason why I'm wearing this polo is because this is a birthday gift from Pastor John. Uh, aside of my gratitude to him. Okay, but I realize that if I can do it to Pastor John, how much, how much more with my God? Amen. And so I give God all the glory for what He has done in my life and for bringing me here into this church, who is a Bible, Bible believing church, Amen. and Amen. preaches the Word of God. Okay? And this morning we were challenged by one of uh, I think I never heard Pastor John preach a hard sermon for, I mean, I think a year. For that one. But this morning we were challenged about how, uh, for me it's a very hard sermon. I don't know about you, but uh, it's, it's, it's a hard sermon because God demanded, God demanded it to us. Amen. Not Pastor John demanded it for us, but uh, God is the one who demands it. Amen. And if you were just listening to the sermon this morning, one of uh, the, the points that Pastor John delivered this morning is about repentance. And for tonight, for this afternoon, we will be talking about repentance. That will be our uh, subject for this afternoon. Okay? So just bear with me. Uh, I invite everyone to please stand and open your Bible in Luke 15. And let's just read. Let's not read all the verses, but let's just read uh, verse 17 to, 9, to 20. Okay, there's four verses that we will read. Then after that, uh, I invite everyone to to, uh, to pray, and then we will proceed with our lessons. Okay. Uh, Luke 15, are you there already? Say amen, please. Uh, we have a long verse, but we have a long verses, but we will read only verse 17, 18, and. Uh, 19 and 20. Okay. So let us read all together. Ready? Begin. And when he came to himself, he said, How many of our servants are Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am not worthy to be called this son. Make me as the one thy heart servant. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Uh, Holy God, thank you for this privilege, Lord. Lord, you know my heart, and I know that I am not worthy to deliver this message, Lord God. But you put me in this situation, Lord God, and you use me tonight, Lord, uh, this afternoon, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit to, to speak to each and every one of us. Uh, I needed this, this uh, lesson, Lord God, more than anybody else here. And thank you, thank you, Lord, for, for being with me. Um, thank you for being with us all. And we ask for the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to please touch us once again as, uh, as we study the word this afternoon. This is our prayer. Through the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So please stand. <laughs> okay. Um, what I was thinking this morning about this, this, this message, when Pastor John delivered the message, uh, I feel that it's. I, I, I was thinking, like, there's no coincidence in God, right? Amen. Pastor John, uh, since this morning, Brother Ray Aguirre uh, spoke about goodness, right? godliness. Right? It means that we should have a high reverence to God. Okay? Amen. And this, uh, this worship service, uh, God also taught us four things, and one of those things is repentance. And this afternoon, we will be talking more deeper on that subject about repentance. Okay? 
Uh, let me just go through with uh, the notes that I have. And just, you, do you have, all of you have a, a handout? All of us had handouts, okay? So just, uh, I'll give you all the points uh, this afternoon. Uh, just bear with me, if I will be a little bit quick. Ganun po talaga ako po natin din sa mga, medyo mabilis ako magsalita. But uh, I'll try to make it slow. And uh, as an overview, in the text that we have read, in verse 3 to 7, it talks about the parable of the lost sheep. And if you will also read, uh, read in uh, verse 8 to 10, it talks about the parable of the lost coin. And both of these parables shows or describe the joy in heaven over one sinner that repented. Yeah. Yun yung pinag-emphasize po sa Bible. That even one sinner po will repent, yung kagalakan na nasa langit will be sobra-sobra po. The joy that will be in heaven over one sinner that repented. No? And in verse 11 to 24, yung binasa natin po kanina, as we have read, uh, this is the story about the prodigal son. And uh, I do believe that all of us uh, are familiar with this story. Amen? And uh, siguro, maybe none of us have not heard this story. So all of us, I believe that is familiar with this story. In this lesson, this afternoon, we will study the importance of the doctrine of repentance. Anyone who has any doubts as to the importance of this doctrine needs only to read the solemn or sincere word of our Lord Jesus Christ recorded in Luke 13, verse 3 and verse 5. As what the Bible says, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. No? Yun po yung sinabi ng Bible. And if, you'll, if we'll just go so to verse 1 po, sa ng Bible, there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose, pakinggan niyo po ito, asa dito, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all, because they have suffered much things. And what the, the Bible says, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent. No? The Lord Jesus Christ was emphasizing to us that no matter how sinner those people are, if we will not repent, what the Bible says, ye shall all likewise perish. And that is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this passage of the scripture, our Savior emphasizes the importance of repentance. Amen? Amen. The Bible is full of this subject about repentance. And the word is used over 100 times in all over the Bible, King James Bible. In the New Testament alone, it is used 58 times. No? So, makikita po talaga natin yung importance dito. In the modern day evangelism, repentance is one of the, one of the missing note. No? Again po, in the modern day evangelism, repentance is one of the missing note. Personally, it is true and I believe that salvation is by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. But faith will always work hand in hand with repentance. Amen. Amen. If you have, if you say you have faith, then for sure you will repent. Okay? So it will go together. Repentance is the keynote in the New Testament preaching, as what we can see in the ministry of John the Baptist. Uh, when uh, John the Baptist started his ministry, uh, the first uh, call that he has is to repentance. In Matthew 3, 2, the Bible says, and saying, this is about John the Baptist, and saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. No? So that is the call of John the Baptist when he started preaching. And also, we can see it in the life and the ministry of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ started his ministry, in Matthew 4, 17, the Bible says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Repent. So, people, not only Christians, need to repent. Amen? Amen. And also to those whom the Lord Jesus Christ commissioned. I do believe that we have, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ already gave us an order, uh, the, what we call it, the Great Commission. And one thing that the Lord Jesus Christ emphasizes it, emphasizes to those people whom He commissioned is, that he commanded to preach repentance. In Mark 6, verse 12, the Bible says, And they went out and preached that men should repent. In Luke 24, 47, the Bible says, And that repentance and remission of sins 
should be praised in his name among all nations beginning from Jerusalem. All over the Bible, you can see uh, that repentance leading to faith is everywhere laid down in the Bible as the condition to salvation. Amen. Okay? So, repentance, we need repentance for us to be saved. Amen. Amen. If you say you believe God, you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's no repentance in your life, then maybe the, 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 the profession that you have made is questionable. And later on, we will uh, go through sa study natin, makikita po natin kung bakit. And also, in the life of Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul, uh, in Acts 2.37-38, to and in Acts 17.30-31, Apostle Paul and uh, Apostle Peter preach about repentance. So, ganun po kahalaga yung, yung doctrine na ito. As we can see, as, as what we can read in the Word of God, repentance is very important in a person's life, whether you are saved or not. Amen? Amen. Acts 20.21 is defying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, dadaan po tayo. Let's go on to our, our uh, topic for tonight. Yung mga points natin. So, if you have handouts, just bear with me. And kung di man yung, if you did not uh, listen carefully, yung word the block dyan, just tell me so I, I can tell you again. Okay? Number one point is what repentance is not. What repentance is not. Or it means to say, what is not repentance? Sometimes we have some experiences in our life that would change something in our life. But we will try to study it tonight, uh, this afternoon, and we will look onto the, the, the points that we are studying if it is repentance or not. So, number one, in your notes please, in your points please, number one, Conviction of sin is not repentance. Repentance includes conviction. It is needed. Kailangan kang makonvict. For you to change your mind. Right? But see, but a sinner can be deeply convicted at all, uh, can be deeply convicted and still not repent. So, it is possible that the Holy Spirit will talk to you but still you resist mo siya. Still resisting the Holy Spirit. No? One example illustration that we can find in the Bible is Felix. Uh, in Acts 24, verse 24 to 25, the Bible says, I will read it to you. The Bible says, uh, Acts 24, and, and after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. In verse 25, and as he a reason of righteousness, temperance, and, judge, and, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. If we see now in the Bible, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. No. Just let's put the, the emphasis on the, the word that Felix trembled. When Apostle Paul was preaching to Felix, when Felix was listening to those things that Apostle Paul was talking to him, the Bible says, Felix trembled. Trembled does not mean that he shaken. Kalayang mo yan, parang nangingil ka pa. But, the, the, the word trembled here is a word for conviction. It means that you are alarmed or terrified. That is something may nangyayari sa puso mo. There's something happening in your heart. And but, instead that Felix would repent, what did Felix did? Yung response niya, he said, Go thy way. Instead of acknowledging those things that you have done, he said to Paul, go their way. And what he said? Go their way for this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Same with us, brothers and sisters in Christ. If the Holy Spirit, if somebody would testify you against your sin, would you reject it or would you accept it? No? So, ganun po yung, yung, yung conviction. Secondly, number one point is, conviction is not repentance. Again, you can be convicted, but it's still not repentance. Secondly, sorrow for sin. Sorrow for sin is not repentance. Some people uh, had a hard time nag-cook up sila sa kasalanan nila because they really uh, they have a really great uh, sorrow on that sin. Repentance includes sorrow and remorse. Again, sorrow and remorse for sin is included. Requirement for repentance. But it is more than this. 
For it is possible to be sorry for sin and yet not to repent of sin. Again, for it is possible to be sorry for sin and not to repent of sin. Right? One uh, one example that I could give you is about vices. Di ko na tatangin kung sino na kikinom sa inyo dito, but I do, I drink a lot before. And one of my remorse when I am drinking is yung after effect. Yung hangover kinabukasan. I hate when I have a hangover after I drink. But I don't remorse or I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not sorry that I drink last night because I was enjoying it. But the only problem is I was remorseful in the morning because I had a hangover on it. So it is possible that you can be remorseful of your sin but still you don't repent for it. Right? Did it happen to you? Nangyari po ba sa inyo yan? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7.9 Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry but that ye sorrow for repentance for ye were made sorry after a godly mother that ye might receive damage by us in not in nothing. The Bible says that our sorrow of sin should always lead us to repentance. Amen? Amen? It should lead us to repentance. It should not be just a sorrow for sin, but it should lead us to repentance. Okay? You get it? Number three, hatred, hatred of sin is not repentance. No? Sorrow and remorse for sin is okay po yun eh. It is better. But point number three is what the Bible says is hatred. It's more deeper than sorrow and remorse. Hatred, hatred, or hatred of sin is not repentance. Re repentance includes this, but it is possible to look or to, to hate sin and yet not to turn from it. Romans seven, uh, Romans seven verse fifteen, the Bible says, "For for that which I do, I allow, I allow not. For what I will, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do." You po sinabi niya po sa when he was still struggling in sin. And it is not true in a sense that every sinner, listen to this, it is not true in a sense that every sinner uh, who among us here are not sinners. I am. But are you? The Bible says, the, 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 our text says, it is not true in a sense that every sinner hates sin. Nobody can repent without hating sin. Okay? Hating sin is included in our repentance. But, listen to this. Hating sin alone is not repentance. Okay? If you have these experiences, na na-convict kayo sa kasalanan ninyo, if you have sorrow or remorse of your, your, your experiences with sorrow and remorse for sin, or even you hate sin, if this is your experiences, but still, it's not repentance. Later on, we will study about repentance. Okay? Um, madali ko lang itong konti kasi yung time natin mahaba pa po ito number 4 promising to do better is not repentance again most of the time the world try to change their life as what they want it to be right <coughs> yeah, most of the time many, uh, many people make a lifelong habit of doing this that is why we are fun of making resolutions right. amen right. yearly we make resolutions why right. so we can make better right the prodigal son in, in, in Luke 15, 8, the prodigal determined that he would return. Iyon yung pinurpose niya sa puso niya. But repentance was not indicated by his determination merely. The, Bible say, uh, the, the text says that here, the way to hell is paved or covered with good intentions. Amen. If you are trying to think that you can go to heaven to be a good person, then you are wrong. Being a good person is a good intention. Amen? Amen. But, it, it, but, but it will not lead us to heaven. Amen. It will lead us to hell. Amen? Amen? So, number four, promising to do better is not repentance. Number five, turning from sin is not repentance. Turning from sin. If you have done something wrong before and you are not doing it anymore, then that is good. And I praise you for that. But turning from sin is not repentance. Why? It is not giving up sins. It is not giving up sins. That is the fruit. Sin is the fruit. But it has to do with the sin itself. The sin that is in us. The sin that is in us. What we do is the fruit of our sin. But sin is in us. Uh, it's, it's in us. Amen? 
if we will sum up yung, yung five points na pag-aaralan natin, if we will sum up the five points that we have studied, if we will sum up the lesson that we can learn from point one, having one of those experiences in our sub-point is not repentance. If you have one of those experiences that you are convicted, you have remorse, you have hatred for sin, you have turned away from sin, it's not repentance. Amen? So, maybe this afternoon you are already wondering what this repentance really means. Me too, when, when I tried to study the first point, I was really thinking, if this is not repentance, then what is repentance? Okay? So, now we will come to point number two. What? Uh, turning. Okay? Okay, turning from sin is not repentance. Okay, nakawal po po yung mga points. Mabilis po ba ako? Yung mawas kasi natin eh. Uh, na. What repentance is? Or what is true repentance? Okay? So, I hope you will listen to this uh, very eagerly. And I, I want to, 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 I want you to, to get this. In repentance is, repentance is a change of mind. An, an, an elective, an, and an intellectual, uh, elect intellectual, yes. Thank you, thank you. Medyo, thank you. Tika lang, ah. An intellectual experience, okay? Repentance is a change of mind, an intellectual experience. It is a change of feeling, an emotional experience. It is a change of purpose. A uh, politicianal experience, meaning to say, yung willpower natin. And it is a change of conduct, a moral experience po natin. Meaning to say, repentance is not one, uh, it's not one of this. Okay? Yung, yung repentance, sabi ng, ano, yung sarabasa natin na apat, yung change of mind, change of feeling, change of purpose, change of conduct. Repentance is not one of this. Get me? But all of them together. Nakuha niyo po? It's not only one of those na nagbago yung isip mo, nagbago yung kandak mo, or nagbago yung purpose ng buwan mo, or you change your, your, your feelings about sin. It's not about it. But what repentance is truly means is all of those four things will be together for you. That's why in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it's not in your notes, but the Bible the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We become new not only in our destination, but also in our disposition. Yung pagkatao natin. Spiritually and morally. That what repentance brings in our life. We change. Not just in a certain aspect of our life, but we change totally as a new person. That's why, that's what Second Corinthians said. Okay? So, let us study slowly one by one so that we can uh, understand those points. Number one, repentance is a change of mind. Okay? Yeah. Repentance is a change of mind. Intellectual experience. The Greek word, uh, the Greek word metanoia, metanoia means after thought. Meaning, meaning to say, yung mga pag-iisip natin. The change of mind involves in true repentance is so radical, it means very extreme or very serious, that the sinner takes up an entirely new attitude towards God, towards the Lord Jesus Christ, towards sin, and towards himself. So it means to say, you totally change. No? Your mindset, if you totally repent, your mindset totally change about everything that you are looking. No? Hindi na siya kagaya before. It's not like before that you, are, you, you, you look to sin as if it is just a normal thing. But now you change your mind. No? It is included. That is repentance. No? One great example that we can find here in a, in a change of mind is found in Matthew 21-28. The Bible says, What think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And in verse 29, the Bible says, He answered and said, I will not. No? That's what he said. His father told him to go to work for him in the vineyard. He said, I will not. But, the Bible says, But afterwards, he repented and went. So we change our mind. He changed his mind. No, I think a lot of us had experienced this. But if only one of these that you experience that, that you think that it's already repentance, you are wrong. No? Repentance is all of these four things that we will be studying. So that is number one, a change of mind. 
Secondly, repentance is a change of feeling. A change of feeling. No? Uh, ito yung emotional experience po natin. No? Dito papasok. At the, the hatred of sin and sorrow of sin, dito po siya papasok. Eh. Sorry. Dito po siya papasok. No? The hatred and sorrow of sin will come in on this part. No? After conversion, if you will look the life of Apostle Paul when he was still Saul, uh, after his conversion, Saul of Tarsus was overwhelmed. Ibig sabihin, parang nalulunod siya or nadadagal siya with a sense of remorse when he thought of his and when he thought of the way he had treated the Lord Jesus. No? So, when, the, when Apostle Paul accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, he totally changed his feelings towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay? Did it happen to you? Nangyari na po ba sa inyo to? Well, that when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, your emotional, your, your, your emotion towards Him had changed? One, of, uh, one example that, that we can read in, in, in Luke 18, verse 13, it is about the publican. The Bible says, And the publican standing afar off, and would not lift up much of his, uh, of his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. One thing that would come into a, 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 a person's life when he repented is humility. Amen? Amen? Right. You cannot come to God and ask God to save you if you still have pride in your heart. Amen. One thing that this publican did is he accepted that he is a sinner. And what did he ask to God? To be merciful to him. Amen? Amen. So that is the second point. Uh, change of mind. And secondly, change of feeling. Thirdly, repentance is a change of purpose. Repentance is a change of purpose. Means to say, means to say yung layunin po natin. No? It is the volitional experience. Yung willpower natin or yung kalooban natin. Uh, the will is involved on this part. No? The will is involved on this part. Oh, okay. The, the prodigal son, take notice, kung balikan natin yung, ano, yung 15. Uh, okay. Yung block sa number T is uh, repentance. Repentance is a change of purpose. Yun yung, ano. Nakuha niyo po ba yung mga points? Ah, okay. Letter number 3 is Volitional experience. No? Spells V O L L I T I O N A N. Volitional. Volitional. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, mo ba? Apa niya? Amen. Okay. Sejo na ba? Sejo. Okay. This 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 repentance involves our willpower. No? Our, our, our emotion change and also there should be a desire our desire should also change towards the Savior okay when the prodigal when the prodigal son in Luke 15 makikita po natin when the prodigal son as what the Bible says came uh, when he came to himself nagkaroon na po siya ng uh, senses in his situation the Bible according to the Bible he said in Luke uh, Luke 18 he said I will arise. When that prodigal son came to himself, the Christian senses about the situations that he is in, what he first did in verse 18, he said, I will arise. Yun yung layunin niya. I will arise. And in verse uh, 20, makikita natin, we can see the response no, of his uh, purpose. We can see the response of his purpose. According to verse 20, 15-20, the Bible says, He arose. So, meaning to say, that it's not only that you said that I will do it, but you will do it. Amen. Amen? You get it? It's not only that I will hate sin, but you will hate sin. No? Your, your purpose or your, 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 your uh, willpower is included in this one. No? It's, just a, it's just not a mere expression, but it's it, it is what you really want to do. Okay? All of us are a sinner and we cannot change our situation. Can we? Can we change our situation? No. All of us are a sinner and we cannot change our situation. Amen? We can change our situation in life unless we come unto the Savior. Amen? 
We are going to change who we are, no matter how poor or how rich you are. Your situation is still the same. You are a sinner. Man. And unless you will come to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will never change your situation. Okay? Let's go to the verse, uh, point number four. Uh, point number four is about repentance is a change of conduct. Yung pag-uugali po natin. It is the moral experience. Yung black po dyan is the moral experience po. This repentance, makikita po natin, this repentance is illustrated in the conversion of Zacchaeus. You know who Zacchaeus is? Amen. Anybody does not know Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus is a very tall guy. Amen? Okay. Yung iba sa inyo, nag-even eh. Okay. Zacchaeus is a short guy. And if you try to read yung passage in Luke 19, what Zacchaeus did in order for him to see the Lord Jesus Christ, he climbed on a coconut tree. Amen? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's what Zacchaeus did. And in response to what he did, the Lord Jesus Christ called him to come down and asked him that he will be in his house. Okay? Take note of this. Uh, in verse 19 and verse 8, the Bible says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restored, I restored him fourfold. So, ito na yung naging conduct ni Zacchaeus. This means to say that before, the conduct of Zacchaeus is to gain money. That's why he tried, he tried to do things that is not right. But after he had been saved, after yung encounter nila ng Panginoon sa Cristo, the conduct of Zacchaeus changed. His conduct is to restore what, what he had gained. So yun yung sinabi niya, he will restore what he had gained to other people na uh, na nakunan niya through false accusations. Okay? So, meaning to say, these four things, this, this, this change of mind, change of emotion, uh, emotion change of uh, change of purpose, and change of conduct will be together. Amen? Hindi po pwede maghihiwag walay sila. It will not just only the three of them that you will uh, you will have repentance and the other one you will not do it. True repentance will include those four things. A change of mind, a change of emotion, a change of uh, purpose, and a change of conduct. Okay? So, alam mo alam mo ba? So, tapusin na lang po natin. It's already 2 o'clock, but I will try to finish it. Oh, one pala, sorry. May tatlong page pa kasi ako eh. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Amen. Okay, so what is? Ano yung pagkakaroon natin sa point one? What is not repentance? Okay. If you, what repentance is not? Or meaning to say, what is not repentance in our experiences? So there are five things na 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 pagkakaroon natin don, no? Regarding what is not repentance or what repentance is not? Balik ako lang muna. It in our repentance. Conviction of sin is not repentance. Sorrow for sin is not repentance. Hatred, hatred of sin is not repentance. Promising to do better is not repentance. Turning from sin is not repentance. So, if you have those experiences in your life, even one of those, it's not repentance at all. Okay? But repentance means, repentance means a change of mind, a change of feeling, a change of purpose, and a change of conduct. All of them together. Amen? Man. All of them together po, hindi po pwedeng tatlo or dalawa lang. It should be the four. It will totally change you. Okay? So, number three, we go to how repentance is brought about. Or paano ba dumating yung repentance sa buhay natin? How did repentance came to a person's life? Okay? So, we have we have five points to study. Number one, how repentance is brought about. Number one, repentance is a divine gift. Amen? Repentance is a divine gift. This is the grace of God working in a person's life. Amen? This is, a work, uh, this is the grace of God working in a person's life. No? And, makukulit po natin ito sa second point. Okay? Number one, repentance is a gift. This is the grace of God working in a person's life. And we will connect this to number two. 
Point number two, that repent, the gift of repentance is bestowed or given through the preaching of the gospel. Okay? So, what I'm trying to say po here is that every time that somebody would tell you about or every time that you would hear about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, there should be or must there should be some people that should repent. No? Repentance is a gift from God. That is the grace of God that He has given to us. Amen? Amen? And this gift is given to us through the preaching of His gospel. Okay? So, a person, uh, this is the only way a person can truly repent by believing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? You cannot repent without the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just a mere expression of yourself to change if yung, yung repentance po natin is, uh, yung repentance natin is without the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? One example of this is uh, found in Acts 2 verse 38 when uh, Peter, uh, Apostle Peter was preaching. Huh? He was preaching about repentance. And what did happen? As what the Bible says in verse 41, and they that glad, uh, gladly received his word were baptized and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So it means to say that if the pre, if the so if the if, if, if the gospel is preached unto you, if the gospel is shared unto you, the result of it should be repentance. By accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, the result of it should be repentance. It's, it, it will not be always like I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and just nothing. <clears throat> when the, the gospel is preached unto you and you really accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, there will be a change. There will be a change in your life. Okay? So, number three, uh, number three. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 So, handouts, in your handouts, you can find the uh, point number three going down. Okay. So, thank you, Pastor. So, there will be additional. Uh, in number three, we still have one more point, uh, one more uh, blanks to be answered there. In number three, number three, number three, the goodness of God leads to repentance. Amen? The goodness of God leads to repentance. It should be, right? If you just can... Just imagine how good God is to us. Amen? Amen. In Romans 2.4, the Bible says, Or despises thou the riches of His goodness, and forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? When we consider the love of God, especially in the gift of His Son, whom went to the cross for us, then we are both to repent us. If you just try to reflect yung, yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa Christ sa buhay natin, just try to reflect what the Lord Jesus Christ did in the cross for us. It should be enough for us no, to repent. It should be more than enough for us to repent. So, Okay, so we will conclude our study uh, about repentance, and uh, I hope you have learned something. And as past, uh, at this point, you have more deeper uh, understanding about Amen. repentance. Amen. All right. So thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Brother Ken. Uh, I enjoy listening to him. What is you're listening to him, it's, uh, you feel like you're listening to somebody who had been saved for a long, long time. Brother Kenneth is one of our first convert here. He got saved uh, uh, 40 years ago. And uh, uh, he is one of uh, our Bible study preachers who is very on fire. Uh, just going to accommodation. So, uh, the purpose of this summit is for you to take this home. I'm sure you have enough uh, versus here.
you take the time to study them, you will learn more about what repentance really is. It's like, uh, let's say if you, if you uh, butcher a cow, the head, let's say, is that the cow? No, it's, it's part of it. It includes a head, okay? There is a tail. The tail of the cow is not the cow. But a cow has a tail, right? So you put those things together, it becomes a cow. So repentance is not just you change your mind, okay? So, uh, and that's all. No, there should be also a change of emotions. There should be hatred for sin now, which is not that before. The, the, the things I used to, you know, love, you hate them now. And the things you used to hate, you love them now. And then there is also a change of will. Uh, if you read that story about the prodigal son, he said, I will, in verse 18, and then verse number 20, and he arose. I will arise, and then he arose. You see, there is an, well, there is an action there. And then the change of what? The change of conduct. So you put those things together, that is repentance. That is biblical repentance. Repentance is necessary for a person to be saved. Because of what Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And the proof that you have repented is that you continue to repent. Okay? Uh, do I still repent now? Do you still repent these days? You still do. See? And you started repenting when you changed your mind. When it comes to uh, to repentance regarding salvation, it's really, you used to believe that these things, works, and all those things, if I do this, if I will do this, uh, I'll hopefully I'll go to heaven. You have faith in the wrong object. Okay? But now you change. When you heard the gospel, the preacher of the Lord Jesus Christ, you heard that only Jesus Christ can save you, so you change your mind. That's also repentance. So the whole thing is repentance. Uh, as I have said, there is enough material here, enough verses here, that if you will only take the time to study for yourself and pray that the Holy Spirit will show you, or uh, will teach you more, I believe you will learn more from this. Amen? Amen. So praise the Lord for that. If you have questions, Brother Kenneth is available, he will stay here and entertain your questions after we dismiss, okay? Uh, we will pray. Uh, your help and video offering last week was able to, we were able to 